thank you, thank you, uh, Skylar and Jim, and once again, thanks, Lean Frontiers, for doing all the, the logistics behind getting this started. So, welcome to Celeste Ayres and Wes Rawlings from Gallo Wines in Modesto. I heard them give a, uh, a similar presentation to this at the TWI Summit about six months ago. It was brilliant. It was to the point. It was factual, and they told it as it was, which what real, which is what really appealed to me. Um, to hear a, a condensed version again of um, of what they went through and, and maybe um, more of what they've learned since. So rather than me talk, straight over to them. Thanks, Celeste and Wes, for giving us your time. Absolutely. We're thankful to be here. And we're going to share our screen here and let you see this presentation. Uh, there is going to be a tag team effort here. So, yes, my name is Celeste. I am the Senior Manager of Operations Learning Development here in Modesto. And I've got Wes here. He's one of our uh, training leads and our training manager here covering the bottling room and the cellar. What we're going to do first is we're going to give you some background information into our world. We're calling this the journey to vertical startup. There's another title out there equally relevant as to what we're talking about today. But first, I want to start with where we where we came from. Who are we? We are E&J Gallo Winery. We were founded in 1933 by two brothers, Ernest and Julio, hence the E and the J. And we are the largest family-owned winery in the world. And we're also the largest winery in the world, family-owned or corporate, doesn't matter. We're, we're massive. We're headquartered in Modesto, California. That's where we're hailing from today. And we have a portfolio of 100 plus different wines. We also have spirits brands. We're going to show you some pictures of our product as we go through, and you might recognize some of them that you've seen on your retail stores or on your uh, wet restaurant wine lists out there. We continue to grow, and in fact, the, the presentation we're talking about today is really a snapshot from August of 2020 on, and so the last two years and our journey towards JI. We haven't done JI or uh, any of the J series here at Gallo in the Modesto area uh, from the get. And so this is our transformation. Our growing globally includes a new expansion into South Carolina. So we are building a, a bottling facility out in South Carolina, and that is set to grow and, and start distributing product here in October. Now, a little bit about us. Now, what were we seeing in 2020? Well, that little graphic is about accurate. It was a, a dumpster fire of crazy, as we all experienced in our respective markets. Uh, we had been asked, actually been told uh, by our leadership that our market for retail sales transformed overnight in March of 2020. Now, we all know what happened in March in 2020. The restaurants closed and retail markets opened up. We saw upwards of 40% or more increase in the wine category for demand. So we had to go and produce product. All the while, people were not coming to work. So the answer was, let's go hire. So we said at the time, we're going to hire about 100 operators. And well, that turned into be 200 and something. But 100 people, we need to also make sure that while they're here, they're masked up, they're distanced. You know, how do you train on the shop floor and keep six feet apart in a loud environment? That's the challenge. We were also pressured to not only go fast, train faster, reduce that cycle time, train better, because we want to limit that, in, that interaction as much as possible, and train at volume. And we, we were looking at each other and go, how are we going to do this? And Wes had the answer. He already knew the answer. And I had been introduced to the answer back in February 2020, and it all kind of came together. And the answer was... We need to deploy job instruction methods into our operating floor. So we started our journey, and our journey looks a little bit like this. So, we Celeste, have... just before you go on, just a quick one. Yeah. T Tammy Stanzial has asked a question, and she yeah. said, how are you able to address literary, literacy issues? Now, without sounding disrespectful, the people that were mm -hmm. coming on, the 200, where, what was their level of literacy? Was it reasonable or was there a lot of um, language issues or, or language or... issues no uh, uh, to clarify in order to enter our operations you must complete three uh, standardized tests or entry-level tests that 
demonstrate that you have minimum competencies to be able to survive in those team those type of roles. I uh, okay. does that say that everyone that walks in is completely a one ready to go? No, no. There is some coaching and mentoring that does go on the shop floor, but we do require that uh, able to speak and function in English on the shop floor, and that's how we yeah, train. Right. Other yeah. areas of our business do have Spanish as an option, not yeah, us. Sure. But in this particular one, that the the level of literacy was not really an obstacle. Not an obstacle. Okay. Understanding okay. and retaining information is always an okay. obstacle, but literacy, for, no. For all of us, for all yeah. of us, yes. <laughs> yeah, no joke. So back to Thank our you. journey here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we started contracting with TWI in July of 2020. Said, let's go train our people first. Start with us. Let us be the canary to the mine. Let us be completely 100% bought in. And that's exactly what happened. Wes here and why he's with me is he's going to be speaking to the process of how we went through this process of vertical startup. Wherever you see a little diamond, these on this timeline and the expansion of our, of our journey, uh, you're going to see more information later on. These were defining milestones in our journey. Now, we could be talking about this for days, but we have 25 minutes. So I'm going to go on to our first big challenge, and that was a pilot. And you're going to see something about this in a minute when Wes starts talking, but we had to go test this out. So with our trainers and with our first group of job instruction trainers, we said, where can we have the biggest bang for our buck? And that was on line 17. This is our pilot. And we looked at where the downtime was. And OEE is an operational measure of, of our efficiency in our production. And where you see that little GPS point, it's a high level of downtime. We went and said, what was that? Oh, it was the packer. And the packer, whenever we try and start it up again, it's dirty and it just doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing. Why don't we train on how to clean that packer? And once we did that, we saw downtime reduced dramatically. And it got the attention of leadership going, what is going on on line 17? How did they dramatically improve their OEE? We trained via G JI that how to clean that packer. And from then on out, downtime improved. So I really like that, Celeste, how you've chosen a point of focus based on data. I think too many times we jump into these things and it's a little bit random, but yeah. you've used data to direct your focus on something that's reasonably concise and measurable. Well done. Really well done. Yeah. So this is July, August. Why we're trying to hire more people, mind you. Okay. So we're proving to ourselves this works. We got the buy-in. Now we're going to go train a bunch of new people in this method on our quality checks and how we go about doing our business. Around like October, they said, guess what, guys? Uh, that can line where we make this product called High Noon, we're going to go and put a pasteurizer in it. And we're going to shut the line down for two months. And we're also want to start up immediately in January of 2022. This is a case for JI. So this is where we started patterning this topic called vertical startup. So deploying the job instruction method, working with vendors, which we're going to cover this process, and operators, we built JI training for that new startup. Training people on equipment as it's offline, getting people all skilled up as best as we can. So when the new equipment started to, to turn on in January, we can quickly train and start producing. We have a couple of visuals there. We have our training timetable, and we also have a very important little graphic here. And this is the rotation schedule. This was designed by operators and how they wanted to move throughout this line. And our job instruction team really helped put this together. So high levels of engagement high levels of success because this is what we saw. Just, we, just hold on two seconds. That training timetable, that was um, managed by who? The um, the supervisor on the, who, who was who was the yeah. owner of that timetable? Our job instruction trainers. Yeah, good, brilliant. So this Thank is you. our production OEE for that line. They were planning us to be uh, up and running in about a month. We killed their production goals in one week. We were up and running in one week at maximum production level. So they're seeing OEE dramatically increase over a matter of days to where it was at peak operating level or the standard. So now we have engineers, we have management going, what is this thing called vertical startup? What is this thing? And we said, well, okay, 
this is what it is. And this has been a big talking point for JI. Then they said, that's not enough. We need to go put in a new production line for box wines, uh, high speed box lines for a little brand called Kirkland. So, so I'm going to interrupt again because we had some really good questions come in, as you know, of yes. uh, when people registered. So John Martin from GAF said, how did you, how did you or do you measure training effectiveness, efficiency improvements or whatever? So OEE has been used throughout. I mean, we've seen it twice already. Yeah. Is that OEE. been the, the uh, OEE? Yeah. Has that yeah. been the measurable all, all the way through or has there been others? Or has that been the consistent one you've used? We've used OEE, we've used um, majority, because as we're speaking the language of operations, sure. uh, we look at defects, we've looked at uh, any kind of metric that operations use, that's what we try and steal. That yeah, and right. so depending their on language. the problem, I guess it depends yes. on the opportunity. You've yes, considered the opportunity, what's the best way to measure it? I really, yeah, love the way you've done that, really well and done, in, sorry. In the case of, vert no, you're fine, vertical startup, um, it, we're looking at ramping up production as quickly as possible and as effectively as possible. And can we sustain it? It's not a sprint. Sure. It's a marathon. So yeah, yeah. we did it again in, in May of 2022 or 2021. Sorry, I'm getting my years all sideways. But 2021, we said, hey, let's put in a brand new box wine uh, line that's high speed and everybody needs this stuff. So let's go. Did it again. Then we went and regrouped and we said, we have a story here, how to do this vertical startup. And Wes, this guy, created a job instruction breakdown. So that's what we're gonna go through in the last half of this presentation is that job instruction breakdown. We're gonna go through it a couple times and mm -hmm. we're gonna do the one thing we normally wouldn't do and show you it. So we're gonna break some card rules and don't tell Patrick or Scott, please. But we're going to go forward with Just this. on that comment, Celeste, yes. <clears throat> don't tell Patrick or Scott. One of the things that Patrick says, and it's very evident here, I think, is Patrick says it's not you don't break the rules. He'll say before you break the rules, first know the rules. So you, know, you know the rules by following a routine and practicing and the card. And once that's down pat, then, it will, then, it's, it, then it's far more effective and you're ready to contextualize really. So yes. um, I think that needs to be put into perspective. Yes, absolutely. And I was all completely joking. Patrick and Scott know what we're doing. But it's yeah, also, we are very much strict on how we apply the four-step method. And this guy over here and the other team members make sure that is continuing in that way. So yeah. I wanted to call that out. Thank you for noting that. Here uh -huh. is the job instruction breakdown. You notice the reason for the key points are hidden. We'll show you those at the end as we go through this. And I'm going to kick it over to this guy, and I'm just going to be the button clicker now because he knows what he's doing. So Perfect. Well, hi, guys, and uh, thanks again for letting us join you today. Um, Celeste touched on a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about, but um, we essentially created this job instruction breakdown for how to deploy a vertical startup. So I wanted to walk you guys through it. Um, I'm going to go through it twice. Um, just going through the steps and we've got some pictures and stuff that you guys can check out as we go through it. But um, wanted, to, wanted to go through and then we'll talk about the key points and reasons and then any questions you guys have about it, um, feel free to feel free to shoot them at us and we'll, we'll answer them the best we can. Then you can definitely have this jib and you can take it with you at the end of today for your own vertical startup. So um, going through. So the first important step of a vertical startup is to pick your trainers. Um, this is, uh, this is a group of some of our trainers that we use on line 11. The second important step is to dedicate to a pilot project. This is that line 17 that uh, Celeste was talking about. Uh, third important step is to integrate your vendors. So integrate your vendors is the third important step. The fourth important step is to access all of your machinery. So access your machines was the fourth important step. The fifth important step is to walk the line with trainees, with the actual team that's going to be doing the work. So walk the line with the trainees. The sixth important step is to create your training timetables. So you've seen a couple pictures already, but this is a this is a hugely important step is to create your training timetable. The seventh important step is to train. Get out there and actually train. The eighth important step is to then share the success data. So we've seen this already, but this is your eighth important step. And your 
ninth important step, your final step is to is on to the next. So I'll move on to the next next project. So I want to walk I walk through the steps. I want to go through again, give you guys key points and reasons for the key points. Um, so again, the first important step was to pick your trainers. Uh, two key points here. The first key point is interviews. So and the reason for that is you interview trainers to see um, if they will actually want to be trainers. Um, the second key point is is willingness. We have to find if if people are willing to do um, what they need to do to be an effective trainer. So that's the reason for that one. The second important step was to dedicate to a pilot project. Um, the first key point is not the startup. So the reason for that is this really allows you to work out the kinks, um, get your get your trainers prepared. Um, and really work out what the JI program is going to be for you before you actually move on to the equipment or the project that you're going to try to vertically start. So that's a really important thing. Uh, the second key point here uh, with this important step is with repetition. With repetition. Second key point is with repetition. It's with repetition. You guys see what I'm doing. All right, I'm done. That's it. But this really allows you to build strong delivery skills. That's the reason for that. You're really building in that repetition into the into the process. Uh, really allows it to hit home, and you'll start getting some great comments um, and great success from your your trainees. So really have to use the repetition. The third important step was to integrate your vendors. Um, the first key point here is training only the trainers. So your vendors come in for your vertical startup, and they're going to train just your JI trainers. Your JI trainers will then go and and train your masses or train your team that's in, that's in charge of running that. Um, we've had some you know, historically, we had vendors training employees that were going to run the equipment, and it was a c catastrophe. So the key point is train only your trainers, only your JI trainers. The second key point is vendor validating the jibs. So the reason for that is you you ensure that you've done everything correctly. So we would, after we would create a breakdown and we have our training ready, we would turn around and actually train the vendors using job instruction and basically have them give us a sign off to say that was, um, that we've captured everything that they wanted us to capture. So that was really important. Uh, the fourth important step is to access the machines. So the first key point here is before the startup. Uh, the reason is you really have to get out there and understand the equipment well before, before that you're actually expected to start the equipment. So any way you can do that before the startup is a key point. So you can really practice your training you can ensure that your breakdowns are correct and your your trainers are um, totally up to speed with what they need to do. The second key point is at whenever hours. So the reason for that is you may have to work around construction schedules. You may have to work around vendor schedules. Um, you may need to access the machines at, at strange times. <clears throat> there it goes. This is one of our, our newest parts of line 11 that we, we just used JI on was that can line there. All right, the fifth important step was to walk the line with trainees. So the key point here is listening to their inputs. So the reason for that is you get a lot of great stuff out of that. Celeste mentioned this rotation plan. Um, this came from this came from the line, the team that was expected to start this this line up. We we talked to them ahead of time and worked with them um, and got their input. And they said, hey, if we want us to if you want this thing to run, this is how we need to rotate. And we built that into our training plan. So really, really important, listening to their inputs ahead of time. We got ahead of a lot of problems that way. <clears throat> Sixth important step was to create your training timetable. A uh, key point here is noting who needs extra help or extra time. Uh, the reason for that is you can help, it's going to help you build your, your plan um, for delivery. So if you can see on this training timetable, you see some red boxes, some green boxes, and orange boxes. That's where the that's where our trainers determined who might need extra time on that equipment. They might take longer to train for whatever reason. It could be new employees, or uh, you know, not a lot of experience, or maybe they had never seen that type of equipment before. But we made note of that right at the beginning, so we could we could factor in that extra time as we um, went out and deployed actual training. So that was the key point. Note who needs extra time. The seventh important step is to train. So actually get out there and train. The key point here is to 
kind of say block as needed. Um, and the reason is you have to make sure your training does not get interrupted. Um, we actually had a couple of designated employees who would kind of stand stand around as people were training like this and actually block team leaders and supervisors who would come up to ask questions and say, that's all right, they're busy right now, they're training. Um, we'll get with you in a couple hours when we're done. And we really needed that. We had, we had to have somebody like that to really block and make sure training does not get interrupted. Um, fifth important step is to sh share the success data. So we've seen this slide a couple times. Uh, the key points here is time and money saved. So the, that's that's the key point. The, I mean, the reason, right? We all we all speak the language of time and money. So anytime we can share that that information or share that success, they ask for they ask for more, which is great because that leads right into our final important step, which is on to the next. And the key point here is as soon as possible. And the reason is you don't want to lose momentum with your your JI program. Keep it going. Keep your trainees trainers fresh. Um, keep the JI skills fresh. Um, <clears throat> that's exactly what we did. That's the picture you see here. That was our next, that was our next training timetable we built and, uh, and we moved on to the next. So that essentially is the, the recipe and the, and the plan for how to deploy a vertical startup on, on any project that you, that you have. And this is what we've used several times. We've, uh, like you saw kind of the, the timeline chart at the beginning here that Celeste went through, we've used this this recipe several times and it uh, and it works pretty well. So this is yours to to keep and use for for any of your projects. And uh, we're happy to share any information and we're we're always just a phone call or email away, even from Australia. But uh, you can reach us any any time. We're happy to help. So our our information's there. Um, this is all available to you guys. So feel free to reach out anytime. So where's a couple of questions? If you have questions. Yeah, a couple of questions. So there's one yep. come in from an, someone who's online right now, anonymous, and it says, what is a JIB? What is a JIB? So how would you best describe that? Sure. What so, is a uh, yeah, so a job instruction breakdown. So that's, a, I mean, that's essentially what you just saw there on the last screen, which has your important steps, your key points, and your reasons for the key points listed. Um, that's what you're that's what your trainer is going to use as their their notes for themselves to make sure they they train the job most effectively. So in that photo where you showed the trainer training, they had a bit of paper in their hand, in their right hand. Yep. <clears throat> that was the jib, I assume. That was their job instruction breakdown and probably hidden behind the paper, they they also have their their blue card mm -hmm. in sure. their hand as well. Yep. And the JIB is the is the prompt of what they will say while they're training. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep, essentially what was just on there. And, and those are the those are essentially all the words that they'll use to, as they go yes. through the training. So, yep. How I describe uh, it to managers, how I describe it, it's the lesson plan. It is yeah, the lesson exactly. plan of the trainer. They use the card and the job instruction breakdown, and it we do not deviate, deviate. If we find a job instruction trainer on the floor without a job instruction breakdown, that's, that's, that's a problem. Um, we, sure. It's with you at all times, no matter how many times you've trained it. So the trainers were operators. They were operators off the line. So when they weren't training, they went back to operating. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, good. And um, so they were off the line. Obviously, that was something. They were off the line for a long time by the sound of it during those startups. Yeah, so yeah depending on the project. <laughs> yeah, depending on the project. So we would, you know, after we got through that first pilot, that's why that first pilot project became so important is we – you know, once we were able to kind of share that success data of that of that pilot project, we started to get a little bit more um, help, and they were more willing to give their their folks up if we, you know, if we were able to give something back later. So mm -hmm. that pilot becomes really important for that to say, hey, if you give us people, you give us some resources and some time, we'll give you all this OE or this time saved or this money saved or you know whatever it is yeah. you're trying. To to, to solve. Yeah, that's right. So there's not a silver bullet is the point. There's an, if there's an investment up front, you will get the rewards. Right, right. Yeah, and we uh, try, and, try and build training, a, a cadre or a group of trainers that can be deployed at any given point in time. So having embedded trainers on the line, so when we sure. do have projects or we have a new person, they can follow that method. And they have, they have gone through, at minimum, the 10-hour course. Sure. Um, you stressed a few times, Wes, the importance of the training timetable. Um, yep. uh, why? Why did you stress the importance of that? Yeah, this really, this really is going to help your your trainers plan 
how, how they're going to go and train, right? We don't want to, we don't want to end up just kind of training by accident or just yeah. kind of walking out there and hoping everything goes well. Um, Cause we know that never goes well. So really having that, it, it's really your plan in place for how, how are you going to get out to the floor? How are you, how much time do you need for each person? Um, how are you going to, you know, how and when are you going to get, get time to actually train these people? How long is the project going to take? Right? Often that's, oh. that's asked of us, Hey, when, when is the project going to be done? Right. Yeah. If we have that training timetable mapped out, we can, we can give an answer. We can say, we don't have yeah. to guess. So it, it becomes really, really important just to, just to have your plan in place in order to get out there and start training. So exactly. So we don't yeah. Do so you, I think the key is that it's not training by accident. If you don't plan, <laughs> right. it will be training by accident if you lack it. Right. Or yeah. Or it won't be anything at all. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Spot on. Um, the Jared Ragazine has said, has asked in the questions when he registered, do you centralize who can create job instruction breakdowns and how are they stored and retrieved? Yeah, we do have, we use a, you know, we use a Microsoft SharePoint where we keep all of our breakdowns. Um, they're not accessible by everybody. So we've got a couple members of the training team who can access them, uh, make changes, print them. Um, any any JI trainer can write a breakdown, uh, but it essentially will go through uh, go through Rudy, who's one of our kind of deployment uh, specialists here with uh, JI. He's in the room with us, but not on camera. And you saw his picture there a couple times. So they'll essentially go through him, and he will he'll check them and make sure they're kind of accurate. We then check them with other JI trainers to make sure they're correct, make sure they work before they get saved into our SharePoint. So by the time they're saved into our SharePoint, they're totally usable and validated and can be used at any time to go and train. Um, but only a few people have access to actually yeah. save, print, mm -hmm. change, update, um, and do all of that. I can't tell you how many times I get asked in a week you know, by random folks, hey, can you send me that job instruction breakdown? I heard you guys did a job instruction breakdown on this area. We wanna use that as our standard work, full stop. No, the only people right. that access that is our job instruction trainers. So Jesus has asked, are the JOBs for the trainers only, or can the JOBs be posted as standardized work? No. Um, there's a subtle, yeah, exactly. There's a subtle difference. It's not that subtle, actually, difference between the two. Do you want to just touch on that? Yes. Sure. Yeah, the, uh, so I mean, the job instruction breakdown is really to be used only by your trainer. It you know, 99% of the time, it doesn't even get shown to your trainee. Um, it is just the notes for the trainer to make sure they don't miss anything. Um, <clears throat> make sure we have a standardized flow of how the training will go for everybody. But it's their, again, their notes to to go out and train. And that's kind of the tell part of it. And then obviously, there's a large showing portion of the, the training as well of actually doing the job. Um, the job instruction breakdown is generally not even full sentences, right? Kind of phrases, small, easy terms, things like that, but all very important things that can't be missed or the job will not get done correctly. Um, your, you know, your standard work is, is very different. Your standard work is much more detailed. It's, it, they're going to follow the same flow. They're going to follow the same steps. They're both going to be, you know, they're both going to be kind of doing the same job correctly, the one best way. Uh, but the standard work is going to have much more detail, sentences, probably pictures, probably you know, arrows or things circled or highlighted or, you know, much more information. Um, so that would, the standard work would be kind of the the reference sheet that we would then point trainees to once the training is complete. Once they're trained, um, we would say, hey, if, you know, you ever need, uh, you forget which way to turn the handle or something, your standard work is posted over here. You can always go and reference that. Um, and then the, the standard work can also be used by the team leader or supervisor to check the work being done after somebody is already already trained so different different documents for different purposes um we're still trying to get our our organization to understand the difference between them uh, yeah. um Be you know different. so we still get asked very frequently can you just send us the can you just send us the job instruction breakdown so we know how to do the job and it, it's to hard no from us on on that one another I think an important yeah i think ahead, an Austin. important point i think an important point here is if you combine, it's not as simple as this, but if you combine job instruction and you have standard work, then you have a chance of achieving the end condition, which is standardized work. I think right. there's a gross misunderstanding in many places about the difference between those three. 
and we can talk about this for days. And I can tell you, this is the analogy I use is standard work or standardized work, work instructions, however you want to, whatever term you're using, that is the textbook. There's a lot more to it, like he just described. The lesson plan, which is the job instruction breakdown is used by the trainer. Just like you wouldn't want to take a class and have the professor stand in front of the room and read from the textbook, you don't, we wouldn't want that on the shop floor either. So the textbook, the, which would be the work instruction, the visual aid, whatever, that is used for reference and for further <clears> stuff. Spot on. We got, we're a little bit over, we're, we're at four, uh, sorry, not 4.30. It is 4.30 for me, but we're at 30 minutes. But do you guys mind, there's a couple more good questions here. Do you mind if we go on for a couple of minutes? Is that all right? We, we could talk more than a couple. It's fine. There's no way now we're going to get through all of them. There's a couple that have come in. One of them I find interesting. How do you keep the trainers engaged? Is there a financial reward? No. No. So how do you keep them engaged? Yeah, I think, um, you know, go, them getting to be part of this journey is a big, um, you know, a big emotional kind of token for them. Um, they get to, they get to help fix the frustrations that they've been a part of, right? They've been through trainings before and they're like, gosh, that was awful. You know, and now they get to turn around and fix that and help their peers. Um, they get to see the they get to see the success. They get to see what they've been a part of and help build and create. Um, so really, it's more of a kind of internal motivation that we that we build throughout throughout the process. But we don't have any, you know, there's no financial reward or or anything like that. So it's it's you know really when you know our JI trainers when they get that first success on the floor when they train somebody and their trainee says man, I wish I'd been trained like that my whole career. Yeah. Somebody who's been here 25 years. Yeah. It, yeah. you know, it, it's such, it's a really great feeling for them. And they're just like, let's do more. What else yeah, can we so do? So that's enough them? motivation. Just that feedback is just enough that motivation. Feedback. And yeah. there was a photo of it in the first section where you saw the guys with their safety vests on. We yes. made, Wes's genius idea was, let's really highlight these trainers. They are, <clears> they've got a specialty here. And it's something so simple. It is a safety vest. We all have to wear them, but it has the TWI logo and it has our two roosters, which is uh, Gallo's rooster in, in Italian. Um, so it's the it's our, our training logo and it's denoting them as a certified job instruction trainer. And they get to wear that all through their work day, even if they're not training. And it's a way to say, I, I've got a special skill. And they've also built this team culture that is really, we're solving the world's problems in training. And yeah, they're yeah. excited about it. That's what keeps them motivated. And yes, we've had yeah. some people be like, I like it. I do this, but I want, I want to go back to operating. Okay, go do yeah. that thing. Fair that's okay. And fair enough. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's okay. That's I like what you said then. That's okay. Spot that's on. Okay. So with one more, Julie has, uh, Julia has asked, were there any jobs or processes along this pathway where JI was not the best method to train? It, uh I mean, JI is not for everything, right? We come across stuff where we're like, you know, hey, we don't need to use JI for this. There's something else we can do in e-learning or we can do, you know, or this is a very simple process. It's more of a just communicate out about this small little change, right? So we we do kind of a needs assessment with, with each project that comes to us. Um, but anything that requires, you know, anything where you can find some key points, we use JI, right? Sure. Anything that's got, got kind of some technical skills that are required or there's you know some little tricky stuff that needs to be done a certain way and everybody needs to do it the same way um we use ji for that so again I think, we, it requires a little needs assessment exactly i think the important point there is that ji um gets you to practice the principle of tell show and illustrate ultimately so um will you ever not use tell show and illustrate i doubt it Will you always use JI for the four-step method exactly as per the card? There'll be cases when uh, not necessary, but my experience is you'll always use the principle of tell, show, and illustrate, which is what JI helps you develop. Um, we will always follow card. that that four-step card. We will always, yeah. if, if we could get them tattooed on their arms, and that we yes. would do that. Um, yeah, we it. But it is, we're maybe a little bit on the militant side on that, the discipline. We do not want to water it down at all. No. But to your point, yeah. JI is not the, but we've been asked, hey, can you do this job instruction breakdown for this thing? And I'm like, no, that's not the appropriate tool. So that assessment is absolutely important. Sure, perfect. 
Guys, that'll needs to pull us up now. I think thank you very much for you. I love your enthusiasm, just as I did at the summit. Celeste and Wes, I love your enthusiasm and uh, very much appreciate you giving us 35 minutes of your time today. Thank yeah. you very much. Reach out. We want to hear from you. Yeah, let us know and if we can help. A few of the questions have come in about particular parts of the presentation. Um, and so you're going to get a recording from Lean Frontiers when you get that go towards the end where these guys put up their email address and I'm sure if you email them they'd be they're very willing to help um, and respond no problem yes. whatsoever yes absolutely please do thanks guys really thank you so it. much everyone we'll see you later appreciate it bye have a good afternoon